to happen. All right, so, uh, so let's talk. One of the things that we didn't go through previously that's worth going through is the assessment, which is the lateral glide. So let's just we'll just do a quick clip on the lateral glide. So you can use your hands, but they it's better to use your body. Right, so that both hands move together like this. And there's three things I'm looking for. The resistance and the amount of energy that I have to apply to move, i.e. the stiffness, the amplitude of the excursion, and then how well it bounces back. And I'm looking at each of those relative to all the other segments that I'm feeling on that side of the spine as well as the other. I'm also combined comparing it to every other neck and segment that I've ever felt. So I start up at the top and I work my way down. So I start up like C2, C1, go a little bit lower, but yeah, it's like right mid cervical is like, eh, right? It just doesn't, it doesn't give. And at least a moment ago, it seemed like Mason also endorsed that. Um, and then the segment below is a little bit better. There's still some tissue tension, but that's more contractile in my opinion, soft tissue. And then, yeah, his left side feels really nice. Yeah, so yeah, we have, I don't know, I'd say it's like probably like four or five, maybe three, four on that right side that will be our target. So that is your lateral glide. I also, what did I also say? If we feel a restricted segment, what is our next course of action? Yep, it wasn't silence, but it was the oh, check the window. Yep, flexion or extension. Or extension. To see, yep, it's still there. Yep, and I extend. Yep, it's still there. All right. So it wasn't just based off his orientation of being in a neutral position. Um, so the, what I've gravitated to beyond just your my lateral glide, that I have just found gives me just as much information. And honestly, I, the feedback I've gotten from patients um, is that it also just kind of feels like a massage is I'm actually just going through segmental rotation, side bend, and extension. Literally the maneuvers that I'd be doing for the setup of the, uh, for the you know, treatment. So, yep, so I'm just, uh, if I went slow, okay, so it's side bend, extension, rotation, side bend, extension, rotation, side bend, extension, rotation, side bend, extension, rotation. And then I do that the same on the other side. Side bend extension rotation. It's a little bit stiff in the upper cervical on that side. Not as much as that, which is what we'll get after it. But yeah, it's definitely right side. Can you see that? Can you see what you're saying? What's that? What? <laughs> Why are you responding? Oh, well, I didn't. I couldn't hear. You haven't spoken. I thought you asked me. What's I'm up? sorry. <laughs> Why? <laughs> What'd you say? Michael's covering my ears. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I was saying that he's a little restricted in the upper cervical spine, but yeah, it's uh, essentially it's side bend. So my lateral glide extension rotation. And you you were able to pick it up that of the upper versus that lower segment because of your direction of your of your glide. No, I would just say that. Uh, I don't know if it was the direction of my glide, I was just say, saying that I was able to pick it up. That it's also uh, his upper cervical in addition to, to this, but of the, of the three levels that seem restricted, this one seems to be the worst. Yeah. What, was it that, what was the result that you felt that you used his upper cervical? Because I'm trying to figure out like if we use this, like if I were to do the decision making of which uh, mobilization to do, like. Would you go back and do an upper cervical one, like the one, like the you know chin nod yeah. or chin cradle one, mm -hmm. because you pick it up. Um, hap not hap I don't know, definitely not haphazard, but you know what I mean. Like it was a combined, con concurrent, like finding that you had when you were doing a low lower cervical assessment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. I, so I don't know if it was the technique that picked, I will say that I was more sensitive to the restriction in his upper cervical spine by doing the, my modified technique versus just the lateral glide. In my treatment decision making, uh, similar to like what I would treat from an exercise standpoint, treating 
prioritizing those things which are central and then moving distal. So I treat, you know, treat proximal to distal. I also treat top down. So the fact that even though he has a pretty, what I feel is like a more firm segment at C3, C4, because there's like some restriction higher up, even though it's less significant, it seems to be less rigid, I would start with the upper and then see if that didn't sort out the, the amount of restriction I feel down below. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's also been sitting over there listening to the lecture in right rotation. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> which, which direction do you pop your neck in, Mason, normally? Huh? When you pop your neck, which direction do you normally pop it in? Mm -hmm. oh. This is always my problem side. Yeah, all right, so <clears throat> that kind of concludes our assessment segmentally. So